Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight, we've got a late night insight video, quick hit video on a house that is gonna be talked about a little bit more on my channel. Um, if you watched my live stream today, I did a couple unboxings and uh, one of them was from a friend, a perfume god person that wants to remain anonymous and so he shall or she shall. Um, and what he, what he or she sent me was this. And this is a couple Ducitas. So we've got Oud Infini, and we have her newest fragrance called Montre. Uh, and you can see the guy sitting there with um, the woods in the background, sitting at his desk, working on something extremely important. And of course, Oud Infini with its animalic civet touches and rose, and of course, Oud. Uh, and she famously uses real Oud. So... Um, you know, these will be talked about on the channel very soon. Uh, but there's a couple other decants that I have. And I figured, you know what? There's one that I've sprayed before. And I wanted to start somewhere where I had a little bit of a footing on. So a couple hours ago, I sprayed this again to remind myself of the fragrance. And sure enough, it's exactly as I remember it. Uh, it's a fragrance called Le Douche de Siam. Now, uh... With all of her fragrances, uh, there is usually a poem that comes with them. The poem for Le Douche de Siam is, The twilight hour comes. Even my grief is swept away by the anonym anonymity of life. The twilight hour comes. Even my grief is swept away by the anonymity of life. Very interesting. Um, and... You can see right here that uh, there's a little drawing, a little shout out to Thailand, if you will. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll read you the, um, I'll read you the blurb eventually. We'll get to that. Um, but first I want to kind of give you the opening of it because it's a, it's a very interesting fragrance. Let's go through the notes real quick and then I'll kind of give you my two cents on, on, on what I think. Because it is a good fragrance. It's very enjoyable. And it came out in 2017, and it's classified as a floral spicy fragrance. Uh, 100 mils is 220 euros. Not terrible. They're doing a, a Valentine's Day deal on their site where if you buy a full 100 mil bottle, you get a 15 mil, you know, um, smaller bottle for free of whatever size, you know, or whatever um, other scent that you want that's in the promotion. So, you know, it's it's not the most expensive niche house. Uh, and, I, and I'm and i somewhat a fan of Ducita. I own uh, Isara. I own a, um, uh, a full bottle of Isara. And um, I've got now some more samples to work with. So you'll be hearing more about the house uh, very soon. Uh, but they are modern niche. You have to remember that they slip into that modern niche category. And there's some things we're going to talk about that I like. And there's some things we're going to talk about that I don't like about this scent. And so here's the note listing. May Rose, Frangipani, Champaka Flower, Ylang Ylang, and Violet Leaf in the top. And uh, the heart is cinnamon and bark. Uh, or actually what they call a... Um, they call it a Thai Chalud Bark. Never heard of it. Um, but... The woody aspects of this scent do play a role as it begins, as it continues to dry. Um, which is basically kind of what I'm getting right now, a couple hours in. Um, and the heart is vanilla absolute, Mysore sandalwood, amber, and ambergris. Okay, so here's kind of how it starts. Because it opens up with a beautiful, creamy, red, white, green floral, okay? Red, white, and green floral is kind of how I see the opening in my mind's eye. Uh, and it is slightly aldehydic, but just slightly, okay? Uh, it's also slightly ambery. Even in the beginning, you're going to get this slightly woody, ambery like feel. And um, that's kind of part of the, the base of the fragrance. Uh, it's, it's how the fragrance, I would say, feels along with the uh, florals. You get that... Um, Cinnamony, woody, ambery, a little bit of vanilla, but it doesn't seem too, too sweet. There is a little bit of sweetness here, but 
Uh, I think they just tried to make it a little bit more, you know, palatable to the average person, if you will. Um, and so, um, what it, what it kind of will remind you of is it's going to hint to famous fragrances of the past. So if you're familiar with some of the old, you know, floral bombs from the days gone by, you know, the Chanel's, the L'Envent Arpege, that kind of stuff, it hints to that in the opening. But imagine you kind of took those, those DNAs and you just remove that heavy aldehydic opening that was popular back in the day. Uh, and if there are some aldehydes in here, I think it's very, very, very slightly dosed just to add maybe a little bit of this ozonic, you know, um, fluffy opening, if you will, which aldehydes can sometimes do. And um, so here's the thing. It does feel somewhat vintage. Uh, in, in the opening, it feels like you're smelling a, a floral fragrance from, you know, uh, many decades ago, which she has been uh, known to take inspiration from fragrances of the past, which I do like. I enjoy that. Um, and one thing you'll notice is that um, right from the get-go, anyone with a nose, forget how much experience you have, but all you have to have is a nose. And you'll be able to tell that this is a floral scent in the opening. The, the uh, top notes are all about the florals. And they're the stars of the show. Uh, and I mentioned some pretty uh, likable and, and popular floral notes and fragrances um, that, that tend to repeat over and over and over again. However, while the rose is very beautiful... While the violet leaf adds this slightly masculine tint to the fragrance, it adds this um, slightly masculine twist and an otherwise traditionally feminine fragrance, okay? Feminine, traditionally feminine targeted fragrance. Doesn't mean that a man like, you know, a man will, could not wear this. This is easily unisex, but I do think it leans feminine, if that makes sense, traditionally. Um, although there's many men that love wearing florals and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I've kind of given up on the whole, uh, feminine, masculine, uh, you know, um, how it's targeted seems like a lot of marketing to me. So, um, traditionally feminine fragrance, if you will. Uh, and, but there's a flower that kind of stands out above the rest. Okay. So to me, um, the champaka flower uh, is the note that kind of stands out above the rest in Ducita's uh, La Douchea de Siam. And there are actually very few fragrances in my collection that have that um, uh, champaka flower note. Uh, there's a fragrance, there's a couple of them that I'll kind of mention, uh, but there's one called uh, Roja's Oligarch that has that champaka flower note, although there's seems like a hundred notes in that fragrance, so that's one of many, many notes. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to smell, um, you know, many of the heavy champaka bombs, if you will, the ones that are extremely famous for champaka, but I know a little bit about the flower, and what I know is that champaka usually gives this very penetrating, rich aroma that will give you hints of things like dry tea. Think of dry, brittle tea uh, and uh, spices. Think of hay and spices in the autumn, right? Uh, that kind of feel. And when you mix it with cinnamon, now you're kind of getting an idea of what the fragrance really smells like. Hopefully that gives you kind of an idea in your mind's eye if you've never smelled this. Uh, Champaka can be very dry and it can be a very pungent flower. Um, and there is this um, naturally musky side to the flower. So when you smell it, even though you're smelling everything that I mentioned, you're also smelling this musky feel, which blends nice because there's no musk in this fragrance. So it kind of blends with the amber and the vanilla and the Mysore sandalwood and stuff like that. And if you remember in the opening, uh, I mentioned that, imagine there's a slight hit of aldehydes, right? And when you continue to kind of work your way through the fragrance, you can't help but wonder, is it aldehydes or is it ambergris that I'm smelling that gives it that, you know, pizzazz, that sun sparkling off the uh, water type feel, you know, um, because there is ambergris in the base. 
And it would be very easy to think that some of those ambergris notes, those materials, is giving it a little bit of sparkle rather than the aldehydes, but it gives the same effect. It gives this slightly aldehydic, you know, feel, if you will. Um, and so, like I said, I haven't smelled the famous Tom Ford Champaka Absolute, which many people hail as like the greatest Champaka fragrance. I've never smelled it. Um, uh, I haven't smelled anything like that. However, I do have. Um, a fragrance in my collection that I would consider to be maybe the um, epicenter of the Champaka. If you want to know what Champaka smells like, you really can't do much better than this. Uh, this is thanks to my good friend Russian Adam, and this is an Atar. This is one of his Atars that he recently put out, and this one is actually called Champa. It's called Champa Atar. And it's basically Champaka in sandalwood. And that's it. It seems very simple, but I actually put some on my uh, right wrist right here. And I've been kind of enjoying it, reminding myself of it. Um, Champaka also has this, I forgot to mention, Champaka also has this fruity side to it. Slightly fruity, almost like dried fruits. So I mentioned dried tea, dry hay, um... You know, and, and I really feel like when I'm, as I'm getting to know uh, the DNA of, of um, uh, Ducita, the brand, um, it really feels like that dried flower, dried hay accord, I see repeated a little bit in her fragrances. And I think that's something that she really enjoys. And then Champaka flower blends beautifully with that, right? Um, and so... You know, here, if you really want to learn about Champaka and you want to kind of take that ne next step, you can't do better than this. And I think you can still buy this on the Arige Ladore website. Um, all you need is a little uh, swipe of this little stick right here. And I mean, it, it lasts forever. Uh, it's beautiful, too. Be very beautiful. Simple, but extremely beautiful. It'll tell you exactly what Champaka smells like. And so this is probably the best, uh, this Ariz Ladore is probably the best example of just an out-and-out -out niche uh, Champaka fra fragrance I've ever smelled. But this is probably, uh, this um, La Doucher da Siam is probably one of the best just out-and-out -out compositions, an entire composition with uh, Champaka kind of leading the way, if you will. You know, Champaka kind of takes the lead role. And... Uh, it's a little surprising because I was reading comments and I never see anyone really mention the Champaka other than in passing. Uh, many people mention the rose, which it is there. There is this rosy aura to the fragrance. There's this rosy afterglow around the, the notes of Champaka, which I mentioned earlier. You know, the, the notes of the uh, dried tea and all that stuff. And there's this rosiness around it, almost like a halo. Uh, and many people pick that out, but very few people, I think, realize... Uh, the depths at which the Champaka flower kind of play uh, the leading tune here. They play the, the lead fiddle. Um, and so, um, let me read you how Ducita describes it. This will be a good time to stop and maybe explain how Ducita describes the scent because you guys know I love reading these blurbs. So here's what it says. The opening, a heart-stopping blend of three fabulous flowers, rich, Rose de Mai. We wouldn't want broke Rose de Mai, would we? Fabulous frangipani. Creamy champaka. Uplifting green notes of carnation are blended by the balsamic sweetness of ylang ylang extra and violet leaf. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Okay. Where were we? Ah, the heart. Soft, warm cinnamon creates a unique and heavenly blend with an exceptional Thai chalud bark. I don't know what that is. Some bark of some tree I've never heard of, probably. A sensual, woody, vanillic spice accord from Old Siam. Maybe the most, um, maybe the one thing that really ties this fragrance to Siam. The base notes, an exclusive blend of vanilla absolute and sandalwood mysore. 
gives lasting harmony through a long dry down with the aphrodisiac scent of rare amber and a seductive hint of ambergris. Okay, so um, here's the thing, right? My source sandalwood is all but banned in um, India. You know, it was almost hunted to extinction by basically the perfume world using it in fragrances, you know, and humans using it for other things. And so the Indian government had to step in and, and stop the harvest or else there would be no more Mysore sandalwood uh, anymore. And, you know, um, it is a very expensive note. And when I see Mysore sandalwood, I still haven't really figured out how these brands do it because like yesterday when I um, did the Latessa early impression, which Latessa is known as one of the uh, top tier iris fragrances in Fragcom, right? Came out in 2016. And um, it lists Mysore Sandalwood in the base. This came out in 2017. It lists Mysore Sandalwood in the base. From my understanding, um, Mysore Sandalwood is not used in modern compositions after like 2002. That was it. They really stopped at the end of the 90s and then the last of the stock was used up by 2002 and that's it. Uh, so when I see Mysore Sandalwood in a note listing like this, it really gives me pause. It, it makes my alarm bells go off. Um, and I'm not saying they're not using the tiniest amount of my sword just to claim it's in there. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, I would be very shocked if there was a large amount of my sword sandalwood in this. How could they sell 100 mils at uh, 220 euros if if Mysore is exorbitantly expensive right now, near impossible to use. And that's why many of these houses switched to things like, um, you know, they switched to things like uh, Australian sandalwood, New Zealand sandalwood, uh, all that good stuff. That's, that's, that, that, that's what they had to do to continue, to continue, um, they just switch to a different type of species, basically. And there's tons of species of sandalwood. And the thing that's interesting to me is they're always beautiful. I mean, very few sandalwoods have I ever smelled that are that are bad. Uh, I love them all, really. They all have different characteristics. Mysore has this very creamy, um, almost religious, creamy smoothness, milky smoothness. Almost like, uh, almost like you're taking a sponge in your kitchen that you use to clean dishes, right? And you know how you can just take that sponge and compress it, right? And it has that spongy texture. Lemony spongy is how I kind of imagine sandalwood in my mind's eye, you know? it's uh, It has that kind of texture to it. And it's one of the few sandalwoods that has that. Sometimes sandalwood can be very sharp and punchy. Sometimes it can be um, pickly, like you've smelled with Australian sandalwood. It has that pickle smell if you've smelled La Labo Santal 33, very pickly. Um, but the reason Mysore was used back in the day is because it was available. It was what was around. It wasn't like, you know, these French houses were like, oh, wow, we've discovered the greatest sandalwood of all time. It's Mysore sandalwood. No, that's just what was there. So they used it. Uh, now it's seen as this rare, impossible, you know, mythical sandalwood. Um, and I wish these houses would just be a little bit more forthcoming. I mean, you know, I understand that they're trying to sell bottles, but, um, you know, when I see Mysore, I almost just instantly put the brakes on. Like, nope, it's uh, it, it, it just doesn't seem logical that they're using large amounts of Mysore sandalwood in the base. Uh, and, you know, that's... I'm not saying there's not Mysore in here, because maybe there is. But uh, my guess is kind of like some of these houses when they use Oud, and they put just enough so legally they can say they use Oud, you know? That's kind of what I imagine when I read something like Mysore in a Ducita fragrance, right? Uh, now, if it's Russian Adam, and he's making 100 bottles for the entire world, and that's it. Yeah, sure. You know, it's possible that... Uh, he got his hands on some vintage Mysore or something like that, right? That's very rare, very limited quantity. It's a one-time run and that's it. But these fragrances that are just made year after year after year after year after year after year, um, I I don't know. It just it 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 
it challenges what I know about my source sandalwood. So that's that's one thing that that kind of put me off a little bit. Um, but let's get to the name because interestingly enough, La Doucha de Siam. Whenever I saw this, I was expecting. Um, uh, see, Siam. If you ever, if you know anything about benzoin, I was trying to see if I had my benzoin. Uh, yes, I do. It's right here. So here's here's the uh, benzoin that Russian Adam sent to me a while ago. And if you actually take a look, look at when I open it. Look how sticky this is. I can't even open it. It's like sealed shut. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't want to break it. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah. You you can kind of see the the lines coming up right there. But I, I popped it open pretty fast. Um, but benzoin is... Um, Regularly found in Siam. You'll usually see benzoin from Siam, for example. And um, it's a very popular base in perfumes. And so when I saw the Doucher de Siam, I was almost expecting something like uh, a benzoin heavy oriental perfume. And instead, what you get is this floral accord with Champaka leading the way. Like I said, Champaka leads the charge. And um, <laughs> slightly rosy aura slightly rosy outskirts with this woody um ambery dry down a little bit of vanilla ambery dry down uh and so it's it uh the name kind of throws people off if you're expecting to get this uh big oriental with benzoin and all this stuff it, it's not what this is actually and I guess that wood bark that she was talking about that I keep forgetting the name of, this, um, the Thai Chalud bark is kind of the connection to Siam, if you will. Uh, and so, you know, this is a composition that kind of goes its own way. Might surprise you a little bit. Is it good? Yes. Is it bottle worthy? No, I do not think it's bottle worthy, at least not for me. Um... I could see how someone would say this is bottle worthy. Uh, for me, this is a no. This is a try, and I'm glad I got to try it, and I'm glad I got to do a video about it. I'm glad I got to put my two cents out there, but um, there's nothing special enough to grab me. Even with the Champaka, uh, I can't say I really have this Champaka craving or anything like that. Uh, the fact that it's traditionally feminine makes it even harder of a buy for me. Um, and I bought a unicorn fragrance today, which was fairly expensive. It was a fair price, though, but it was still fairly expensive. So, you know, spending another $200 on a bottle of this is just probably not smart. Um, so, yes, this is a try, and I enjoy it. I like it, uh, but I, I don't think I would pony up for, for a bottle. But I'm glad to get to try it. I'm glad to get, get to put my thoughts out there. We get to get the uh, Ducita uh, playlist going, if you will, right? And so, um, you know, now we're going to have our, our Ducita playlist and we can continue to add to it. So, uh, if you have experience with um, Le Doucha de Siam, I would love to hear your thoughts. To the person who sent me this, thank you very much. Uh, you know who you are. I very much appreciate you uh, sending stuff like this to me. It just allows me to talk about more and more fragrances that I just wouldn't be able to before. So, thank you very much. Much obliged. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Uh, do leave a comment. I usually don't say this, but do leave a like, you know, uh, the likes get the algorithm going and the algorithm get more people coming to the channel. And it's a cool little, you know, circle of life on YouTube, if you will. So I do appreciate it. Although, you know, I hate it when people tell me to like a video. Like if I like it, I'll like it on my own kind of thing. But I, I, I very much appreciate those of you who do and who support me and, and all that good stuff. It's been, it's been a lot of fun doing these. So thanks everybody. Cheers guys. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.